My name is Daniel Feller, and I'm here to talk about our class project, which was the real-time prediction of sepsis in the intensive care unit. So sepsis has a high business value. It's the most common cause of mortality among hospitalized patients in the United States. Each day, 2,000 to 3,000 new cases of sepsis are identified in the United States hospitals, and at nearly $24 billion in annual health care costs. Sepsis is responsible for 6.2% of health care costs and is 70% more expensive than the average state. But the opportunity here is that if doctors can predict sepsis, they can possibly prevent it. And if they can prevent it, you can save lots of money to the American healthcare system. So what we did to predict sepsis was we set up a big data environment on Amazon Web Services. Then we define our positive and negative labels of sepsis. We had about 60,000 cases in total. Then we performed feature selection on six different tables from an EHR data set along electronic health records. We then performed feature engineering, feature selection, model selection. We trained many different classifiers. And then we built and evaluated our prototype intrinsically. So our technical environment was on Amazon Web Services. We used several different clusters of resources on Amazon Web Services including S3 buckets, and we also set up a Jupyter Python notebook server on Amazon Web Services. For our training data, we had 40 gigabytes of training data in the raw data set. We had about 5,000 cases that were either negative or positive for sepsis. Note the class imbalance here, 4 versus 46,000. We combined these six distinct tables, patient characteristics, laboratory tests, procedures, medication, free text notes. And it's important to note that we limited all data to the first 24 hours after hospital admission. This is because we wanted to build a tool that it could allow physicians to predict sepsis before it happens. So when the patient is admitted to the hospital, they know relatively quickly the person's risk of sepsis. For feature engineering, this is how much data came from those five tables. And then we discuss what kind of feature engineering was performed for each table. This is listed in our project report. In terms of model performance, we evaluated 25% of held out data, so it was unseen tr uh, testing data. We found logistic regression with a regularization penalty to perform best with an F1 measure of 0.93, similar precision and similar recall. Hi, and welcome to our video for our prediction of real-time sepsis in the hospital environment. So as we mentioned in our presentation, we used Amazon Web Services with a Jupyter cluster within AWS, as you can see here, to process the data. The readme file in our GitHub repository tells about how to run our code. For feature engineering, we use sepsis labels, a Python notebook here, to create the cases and the controls, the positive labels and the negative labels. You can see this in the GitHub project. After we created the positive and negative labels, we performed feature engineering. Feature engineering was performed again in an interactive Python notebook. You can read more on the in-depth instructions here. This is our CSV file with all the features. So if you're trying to just run the classifier, you want to use this CSV. After the feature engineering was, was finished, you can execute classification. This develops and evaluates the different classification models, which include logistic regression, decision trees, created boosted trees, random forests, and naive base. The Python notebook, again, can be used to further investigate these models. Here it is, classification. Finally, we have an interactive visualization for the clinicians who ultimately will use this tool. And that's in an R script here in the visualization folder. 
simply execute the interactive visualization.r file and you'll create the visualization. So I've pulled up the visualization here. Here, we can see that a typical emergency room would have about 50 patients, and we've restricted this to 50 cases. We can zoom in on the high-risk patients. We can select one of those patients. As you see, this is patient number 2618, and they have a risk factor of keratolac, and they're high risk. We see them in the red here. We see other high risk ones. So if you want to generate this for yourself, you can simply go to the visualization folder and to this interactive visualization.r.